she should be doing my intro at the moment, but because I wrote the intros for tonight, I'll do my own. <laughs> so um, I've, I've got completely the wrong qualifications for being here tonight because I've got a business degree, which means I'm qualified to open this up and probably use Excel or something like that, but that's about it. Um, the only reason I'm here is because I've been doing this for an awfully long time. Um, I didn't actually mention where Hui Jing was working. She's working for publicists, which she kind of mentioned, but not that really makes much difference. Does anyone really care? I'm working for an insurance broker. Um, I've worked in insurance for an awfully long time. It's just another industry in the end. I don't really care about it. But you know, wherever you happen to work, you can make things a bit more interesting by being a better web developer. Um, I should actually get my play screen going. Yes. What I'm talking about tonight is um, navigation and particularly about Priority Plus, which is something that's been around recently and something I've done to it, which is not really that exciting, but I thought I'd show people anyway. Um, if I don't mention this, <laughs> then someone else will. So I'm just basically you know, putting it on ice. I'm not him. <laughs> I got this today. I'm not that Melamy, uh, Matt Bellamy from Muse, even though he's a much better musician than I am. So, sorry. I think I'm that guy. <laughs> right. I'm really bad at doing live code demos, so I've got these really obvious hints for myself. Um, so bear with me as I completely mess this up. And I can't do it. Ah. Hey. No, I can't actually see. So this is a basic navigation. You've got an unordered list, several list items, take away the basic QL properties from it, um, display inline blocks so they sit next to each other, give them a hover style and a focus state, and you're done. That's a basic navigation, so that's pretty easy. Um, See why I'm bad at doing code demos. So with that, everything's great. The web is conquered. We can go home. Unfortunately, someone came up with these little things. Yeah. And they said, no, no, your menu doesn't fit anymore. So we had to do responsive things. Um, so this is basically the same kind of thing. and. What I'm going to demo is a, a really simple um, hamburger menu. <laughs> That's what that person thinks about hamburger menus. <laughs> so once we get to a certain break point, and this is a completely arbitrary break point, our menu collapses down into a little hamburger icon. Um, and then when we click that, there's your menu. And Internet's conquered again. Um, this is really awkward. <laughs> Yay, we're good, good again. Um, the problem is, it doesn't really work that well in certain, like in execution, it's not that great. So, awkward code demo again. I'm actually using my own company site for a name and shame, which is pretty good. So this is who I work for. We don't actually have any physical products, so when it comes to design stuff, we always have these weirdly abstract things that mean nothing to anyone. So you get like this is the iPad size breakpoint, and we're into hamburger menu already, which is just crazy. Um, and then the navigation is just nuts from there because the people who did this. Yeah, it's insane. My, I mean, my company is a global insurer. We cover pretty much anything you can think of. And trying to present that into a site is really hard. Um, and I could get really ranty and annoyed about it, but I won't. So <laughs> it, It's not easy. It's not like if you're selling a product, it's pretty simple to show what's going on. And a lot of examples you'll see out there will show you how to sell products because they're easy. The abstract stuff is really hard. Um, but think about the hamburger menu and 
hamburger menus have been adopted because they've been adopted. There's no good reason for them. Um, they've been tested out as well as to see how good a hamburger actually is. And what people have found is that hamburger menus are actually not very good at destroying what a menu is. Um, so from this test, and there are lots of others out there, the best thing you can actually do is have the word menu in whatever language you can possibly think of. And there are translation references out there, so you don't have to try to think what it is in Uzbekistani or whatever language. Um, put a box around it so it actually looks like a button or something that you might interact with. And you'll notice that people will actually use your menu more. So hamburger menus are very bad. This is my UX hat going on at the moment. Um, so avoid them. All you needed was the word yet, yeah, change of hat, and I'm good. Um, I cross too many disciplines in my job, so I cover different things. Um, yeah, put menu, put a box around it, and you're good. The best thing is actually if you have some of the most important items right there visible, and then like... Uh, We're getting to that. Menu, like that getting to that. <laughs> Super. <laughs> 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 you can talk now because I'm about to have a drink. <laughs> okay, there's a great website called the Norman Group. They have all kinds of amazing research on you. Nielsen Group. N no, Nielsen. Nielsen Norman. There's something like that. Yeah, Nielsen Norman Group. They did UX research. There's fantastic studies being done on why this is good and this is bad. And it's like a great read for before you go to sleep every night. But this <laughs> If you, I mean, if you turn up at your, at your work tomorrow and you say we have to kill our hamburger menu, people will fight you because it's there and because other people have done it. You need evidence to back you up. This is why you need to look up these guys and use someone else's data. It's out there. It's available. You can use it. And get them, make it really blunt and say, do you want to throw away 13% of your users? Yes or no in an email. And if they say yes, then let them wear it. Um, but when you actually word things properly like that, no one ever accepts it and you usually get your way. That's why this website is so great. You have like, arguments and facts backing the design decisions. Yeah. It's, the design is not about opinion and subjectivity. It's like there's evidence out there for good and bad. Exactly. And that's theoretically, that's the whole field of UX. It's yeah, what it's meant to be. Theory. Whether it works that way, not necessarily. Um, the key thing is obvious, this is what Luke uh, Rubleski says. I've got Polish friends who taught me how to say his name properly. Then I met um, people who know him and he doesn't say his name properly, so I just give up and say anything. Um, he's more commonly known as Luke W, but he's done some awesome research and things on navigation and all sorts of and form design over the years. Um, obvious always wins. It's a really important principle where you have to remember that um, if you're showing it, then you know people will interact with it. If you don't show it, then they're not going to interact with it. So it goes back to why you need to actually have a menu called menu. Right, on to my next awkward code demo. And this is what Thomas was talking about. This is the priority plus navigation. So this is on uh, Chris Coyer's site. Um, this is CSS Tricks, which I recommend everyone should bookmark and you know, add to your RSS feed if people still do that. <laughs> I have my RSS feed. Um, the best thing about Chris Coyer is on his site, he actually updates things. So when he published this, um, so this is August this year, it's actually been updated since as new techniques have come out and people have revised things. So even though it's not really that organized, it's a really good reference. If it comes up in your Google, Google results, pretty much trust what Chris says. And I'm not just saying that because my name is also Chris. The basic idea and the reason it's called Priority Plus is the most important menu items go on the left or right if you're on a right to left language. Um, and then when the screen shrinks, you hide the ones that you can't see anymore. And I've got a code demo for this. So you'll see home is the most important about clients, contact us, 
you need to think about your navigation in these terms of what people do. If you've been a good UX practitioner over the years, you know this anyway, but this kind of reinforces that. Um, there are some exceptions to that rule, but the most important things go there. So when I start shrinking, and this is actually breaking a bit, you'll see that that one's gone off the screen and the menu's reshaped itself. So what happens is those ones on the edge actually go down here. And you'll notice that instead of just that last one going to the next, he actually takes two. Um, because it's always silly when you get to the, you know, here's the next thing, there's only one there. To make it worth it, you basically take away a couple at a time. As I keep shrinking this, you'll see that the next item, <laughs> I've broken it. Oh, there we go. They'll keep getting added on there. <laughs> and this, this is the essence of Priority Plus. You can see this live. The Guardian have been doing this for a while. They're probably one of the first um, to really bring the technique out. Someone else named it. Uh, you can read about it in detail on Chris's site. But that, that's the principle here. So instead of having an arbitrary breakpoint that you bring in your navigation change and your menu button and not the hamburger, because we now know that's bad, um, you can adapt. I mean, this is the essence of responsive design. It changes to whatever you need it to be. So this is really awesome. Now, I can't leave things alone. Oh, why is this rendering like that? There we go. So this is a site I've been working on. And you'll see I've actually not done that properly yet. Sorry. We start out, this is basically the same. And we go for a more button. I've actually got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Someone remind me to fix that tomorrow. We've actually got a uh, client test of this tomorrow as well. That's why you passed the key off. Exactly. <laughs> So this starts shrinking in, which is great. We're down to a couple, and you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I'm doing here is I'm only showing like, a pretty basic menu structure. Um, if I flip to the Guardian, uh, we go. What they do is they show a massive menu. So when sometimes you have massive menus, like my company's global site will have something like this when I get my filthy hands onto it. Um, so all that happens is instead of, because all, all I'm doing is using a script basically to shove the menu over, like to clone it onto this um, overflow. And th th the code behind it is really simple. And I, I've taken Chris's and just made a few changes here and there. Um, but there's nothing really that much to it. If you have a massive menu, then instead of having to you know, reorder the menu items that you've got, makes it a lot simpler where your more just basically shows everything. And that's the Guardian's way of doing it. As we keep shrinking, this is at a certain break point that the fonts and the sizes get a bit smaller. And you'll see that the menus actually expand out. So this is the real beauty of this approach. And if this was a shorter menu item, you might fit another one on here. If the logo's a bit smaller, you might fit more. Um, it works really well. Then when we shrink too much, we get down to menu. And that just shows us everything that we want on mobile. So that's that, which is great. But I'm not done yet. These were the reason I actually came up with this in the first place is I was given a design challenge. Um, we got designers to help us out, and they gave us a design where the logo takes up a certain point portion of the screen on the same line as the main menu. And when you work in a company like mine, everyone wants to add more menu items. So when you're taking up valuable real estate to show the logo, 
on the same line as the main menu, you have to make some sacrifices. And this seems to be the best of both worlds. Um, so here's a really hacky code demo of a secondary navigation. You can see I've actually done it so badly, you've got menu highlights in there. So the question was, what do you do when you've got secondary nav? So this is something that's within the context of a page. It might be um, um, like a progress bar or something along those lines, you know, the number of steps that you're showing. Um, so my solution to this, I've not really seen anything else like it. I'm sure they're probably out there, just I didn't find it. When I get to a certain point, I start getting scroll bars. And then I can just, one at a time, make my own way through it. So we never actually hide the menu, and it shrinks a bit further down as the screen gets there. It's basically the menu is always functional up until that point. Um, when I get a bit more interesting with this, my plan is to make sure that the currently highlighted one is visible by default, because at the moment it just goes to the left. You can see my terrible lack of overflow here. What I've done here is I've gone old school, and um, so I'm new to Flexbox since I haven't had the browser support to actually implement it. Um, and this is just some absolute positioning and things like that. Once I change this and rewrite it to use Flexbox, I won't have any problems. Moral of the story is use Flexbox for absolutely everything. But that's it. So that's my priority plus, 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 plus something. <laughs> any questions, Thomas? No, just no. reinforcing. It's super <laughs> important. Like the hamburger menu is like one of the typical examples where somebody had an idea and a lot of people copied it and it became popular for no reason. Um, it's actually not good UX design because it doesn't tell the user what it does. Um, like it doesn't speak to the user. Actually, what's the best, specifically if you're trying to do mobile, is actually showing a menu bar on the bottom or top, depending on Android or mm. iOS, the same way the native apps do it and have a more button or the three dots over next to it where like people are also use depending on their operating system what's hidden behind there. And they're always visible or just go away while scrolling, which is a pattern that's like now a thing as well. So that that makes much more sense. But the the general hamburger menu is like really bad UX. Specifically if you have mixed content in there. Like Redmart the app even has still the same mistake. They use a hamburger menu and it's like everything is in there. From your account setting to your credits to the categories of the navigation, like the product categories, it's such a mix. Like people don't know what to expect that's hidden behind this menu. Yeah, so you won't get rainbow unicorns if you use a hamburger menu. Never, basically, never. You get fat. <laughs> <laughs> that's what no one has cited a rainbow unicorn near a hamburger menu. Um, one of the things, again, when we're talking about adoption, because it's nice to see something here, but you have to think about how you're going to implement it at your work. And someone somewhere is going to say, well, Apple do it that way, Google do it that way, why should we? And that's, again, where you need to do your research, which is basically hit Google and grab someone else's data and show them what's going on. Because the, the research has been done. You don't need to do your own to prove that hamburger menus don't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You can also tell your stakeholders the story behind the hamburger menu. That's Facebook, what I was getting at. Yeah, Facebook actually... No, 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 before that. Before that? Yeah, the icon itself, the three bars, has been around oh, since the okay. 70s. Xerox tried it as doing... I can't remember what the function was. They couldn't get proper adoption for it, so they dropped it. Someone else picked it up in the 80s and tried again. There was a third attempt in the 90s that gave up, and then we had a lull for a while until mobile kicked in. And it's like, oh, what do we do for menus? I know, there's this menu that no one's ever managed, an icon that no one's ever made sense of before. We'll use that. Um, so we've basically got the least loved icon out there and use that as our main navigation, which is a terrible thing to do. Should I actually put that up again? Any other questions, comments? No, thank you.